Welcome to another episode of Two Stout Guys. I'm your host, Kyle. And I'm your co-host, Eric. Today, we're going to dive lips first into some cider. Today, we're going to be diving headfirst into the world of fermented apples with two very local winery slash cideries. Tapped Apple Winery and Cidery. And BF Clyde's Cider Mill. Both very local. One's out of Westerly, Rhode Island, and the other one is out of Old Mystic, Connecticut. Also a historical landmark. What we got here is a cider, uh, Tap 37, and a wine. It's also a cider. It's called the Mystic Mango. What's the difference between an apple wine and an apple cider? Apple cider is made from crushing the apples and fermenting the juice. All right. Apple wine is made the exact same way. So there is a slightly different process. Apple wine does call for more sugar. The extra sugar, extra sweetener, allows the fermentation process to go over a longer period of time. That allows the alcohol to boast a percentage of about 12 to 14 percent. Essentially the same process. I'm sure somebody's going to argue with me over that, but... Well, if we even got comments, they would. True. But... <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start today's episode off with the Tap 37 out of Tapped Apple Winery and Cidery. So... We actually just discovered this on Saturday. We actually visited the place. We actually got to talk to John the Fourth. Uh, he's the COO of Tapped Apple Winery. Uh, so that was actually really interesting and everything. Yeah. Um, so what we have here, their Tap Thirty Seven cider, is their bourbon barrel aged. They aged it about nine months, and actually they use barrels out of um, Sons of Liberty, which is North Kingston, Rhode Island. They use uh, one barrel there and two corn whiskey barrels to age. This cider, they don't distribute anywhere. So if you're ever in Rhode Island, near Westerly, you got to go check them out. Delicious. Yeah. Go ahead and break into this. He was telling us that he got into the hobby about 15 years ago, doing wines with his dad and everything. So that was kind of cool to talk to him about that. Um, and about three and a half years ago, they decided it was time to change up their life. Um, so they opened the Tap Apple Winery, and it's been in West River Island ever since. Nice clear cidery color. Very apple cider smell. Yeah, yeah no, it, it. It, it doesn't <laughs> smell like bourbon. So there's a slight whiskey after smell, if that's the same thing. Yeah, maybe. All maybe right. so somewhere in the nose. Somewhere in the nose. Definitely in the taste. You definitely get that whiskey, that bourbon taste. But it yeah. doesn't overpower the apple and the, the natural cider flavor. No, it doesn't. I mean, the sweetness from the apple is really good. The carbonation mm. makes it really good, really palatable. Definitely. The bourbon just makes it, the bourbon barrels yeah, just make it, it taste that much better. After taking a couple more sips, it starts off with the bourbon at the front of the tongue. And then by the end of your sip, you're left with that sweet apple-y cider flavor at the back of your tongue. Kind of just does a whole wash where you just get a nice range of flavor in that. That is good. Yeah. Everything comes through very well. It does. It's a good it, blend. Definitely well balanced. If you like whiskey, you like ciders, you're definitely gonna like this. We're gonna do what we do here. Let our palates kind of sit for a little bit and uh, we'll give you our opinion. Tech guy is with us again. He kind of agreed with me. There was whiskey up front, up in the back. He's not a whiskey drinker, but he was kind of enjoying it. We had a contrasting view from your girlfriend who agrees with me and we're getting apple up front and I was getting whiskey in the on the back end. She wasn't getting the whiskey at all. Well, she's uh, never had great taste. Don't want whiskey, but you want to try something different with your cider, this is it. We're going to take our second sip. I'll let you know. When you take a larger sip, I will say that I think the whiskey presence is a little bit more pronounced. Mm -hmm. Which I wasn't getting the first time because, you know, we sip leisurely here. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, it's just my mind doesn't quite wrap around it with it being a carbonated cider with a 7%. I like it a lot. I, I, we've had other whiskey barrel aged drinks. We've had some with scotch. We've had others with bourbon. It all has a distinct certain flavor to the beer. But with a cider, with that sweet apple and the uh, the whiskey, the bourbon and everything, I, I mean, I'd have to give Sons of Liberty a try and some, try some of their bourbon just based off this alone. Yeah, no, there's something kind of magical going on here. It really, it's a traditional cider, really nice, crisp semi-sweet cider it's definitely not dry for those who are wondering no yeah yeah i guess um, we should have said yeah that. <laughs> throwing throwing that in the bourbon barrels just we got aged for nine months in there well generally nine months makes something pretty beautiful like me <laughs> <laughs> how finishable is it very mm. much i had a lot of a lot of bourbon in that one and here's the apple 
Yeah, it finishes clean. Clean Very and nice clean. and sweet. There's none of that whiskey burn like you were doing a shot of cheap whiskey. I mean, if you if you drink this quick, it's going to go down like a shot and it's going to feel like it. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> so It's delicious. Whatever it Very is, good. it's delicious. It's finishable all around. High marks. We'll definitely be back to tap. We are now moving on to Apple Wine, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Cider. From BF Clyde's, something that is seasonal. They're only open, I believe, September through December. Clyde's Cider Mill is located on the in the small village of Old Mystic, Connecticut. BF Clyde started making hard cider here in 1881. The apples for our hard ciders and apple wines come from local orchards and are pressed into juice here at our mill. We did mention that. The juice is then pumped into oak caskets in the mill's cellar, where it's fermented and aged for up to three years. All of their hard ciders, apple wines, and flavored ciders are still in keeping with the tradition of cider makers of long ago. Tradition is very important to us here at Clyde's. In 1898, Frank and Abby Clyde built their Victorian-style building and purchased the machinery still in use today. It's pretty cool. You can still see those machines in use. This is brand new. So even to those viewers in Connecticut, check this out. It started, I believe, this September, September of 2020. Yeah, that was the first post we could find on their Facebook page was yeah. September, touting their new mango apple cider yeah. wine. I mean, we could have the timing a bit wrong, but we go every year. Why don't you guys go there and check it out? Again, the cool thing about Clyde's is that they are not sold outside of the cider mill. Oh, really? So oh. you're not going to find them in package stores. You're not going to be able to buy it online. You've got to go there. You've got to purchase there. Let's, uh horribly pour this wine yeah we are not sommeliers so we don't know what we're talking about if this is indeed wine let us know how bad we're doing down in the comments are we aerating enough do we swirl it do we not swirl it do i even keep this at a 45 or not do i let it splash <laughs> that was an aggressive pour that was a very aggressive pour i was trying to aerate it i'll put that back over there for you then <laughs> give it a swish yeah, we'll give Why it not? a swish <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so... It smells good. Oh, yeah. I thought it was just going to smell like their other apple wine, but... No. Yeah. a little extra robustness to it. Let's let you dig in there. Oh, oh, wow. Very, very, very sweet. Mmm. But very good. Yeah, I mean, that robustness I was talking about in the smell, is, it hit me right away. Like, it was not just apple. There was definitely some mango in there. So oddly enough, not explicitly stated, but if you can tell from the label, there are three fruits involved in this particular apple wine slash cider. Three, you say? Three. Three. We've got mango, obviously, mm -hmm. apple, and cranberry. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what I was catching in there a little bit. Huh. Yeah, I think the cranberry gives it just that little bit of tartness that'll cut the sweetness. Mm -hmm. And let the mango really shine through. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not getting a, a super sweetness for a wine. To me, it's... No? It's not a dry. Yeah, I'm getting like a semi-sweetness. Like, if I was a scale, like a Riesling, it's not as sweet as a Riesling. Honestly, I just... I really like it. I, I don't know. I've never had a mango and apple together. But definitely that cranberry... I would say it finishes like there. cranberry juice-ish. You know what? Yep. I would agree with that. Well, it's good. Yeah. That's good it's product. Good. Honestly. Their wines are pretty pretty damn good. They are. They are pretty damn good. I'm not going to discredit them. Nope. They're great. I, I go there, like we said, every year. I buy a bunch. I give them out for Christmas for my relatives out of state. And then I have my wine rack back there that <laughs> always has some Clyde's wine in it, like, year-round. <laughs> and this might just be there next time around. Next time around, yeah. I'm definitely going to have to pick up a bottle of that. So once again, we asked Tech Guy what he thought. He thought it was delicious. Sure did. But uh, he, he really wanted to know... What do you pair this with? You don't pair it with a main course. You don't pair it with that. Absolutely not. Um, it, it, you were telling it, it was a dessert wine. Very much a thinking. dessert wine. Yep. Uh, it's, very, it's so sweet. It's it, it's not going to pair well with traditional food. Definitely not savory food. And my girlfriend had a taste, and she drinks Riesling in M Moscato, and she said this was even sweeter, and I don't like sweet very much, so I don't know where she was getting that. That's why she's not on the show. We are. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking, and, you know, neither one of us particularly loves sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I think you and I both prefer savory over sweet. But in this case, I think it hits those points that we're looking for when, when we want something sweet, 
or we expect to be drinking something sweet, we want the sweet to be pronounced. We want to be able to taste all the fruit. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just nice. It's dessert. I would say if you're going to drink this during the summer, you throw some ice with a nice fruit salad. So you're sitting there at the picnic, your fruit salad, this over ice. I think that's going to be delicious. Yeah, do that or get yourself a sangria going. Mm-hmm. Just throw it in a nice vat and put more mango in there. Put more apple in there. And let it sit. Definitely. Let us know if you do that. But uh, we're going to give it another taste right here. Once again, even before it hits my tongue, I'm already getting such a great flavor out of it. And I don't know if it's faux pas, but someone's ordering us another round. It does drink really well. It That's does. smooth all the way down. You never get, like, the tannin bite? Is that a thing? We can make it a thing. Sure. The tannin bite. You don't get it bite. out of this. Yeah. <laughs> You know what, though? This makes me feel like I would not get a wine hangover the next day, and that just sounds super dangerous. Yeah. I'm not going to put it to was, the test. I was going <laughs> to say, you saying that is just a complete recipe for disaster. This is probably going to give you the worst hangover in the world. <laughs> and that's just me being honest from somebody who really likes this, really, really mm-hmm. loves this. Come back to the part of the episode, so we're going to just let you know that both these winery cideries at facebook's i know tapped has a instagram and a twitter we're gonna link all that down in the description you can also follow us on facebook twitter and instagram don't really post a lot because we don't really have a lot of interactions right now um still up and coming let us know what you want to see what you want us to post uh remember to like comment subscribe hit that bell let us take you there yeah on your journey wherever you want to go we'll travel for you thank you wow that was beautiful thank you um we do try to interact with the comments if we ever get any. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let us know how wrong our opinion is, because we know nobody asked for it. <laughs> right. And we also know our opinions are never wrong, so. It's a true fact right there. So, um, with that, that's the end of our show. Tune in next week, or the week after. Whatever, we got something special coming up, and uh, what are you reaching for over there? Where are you going? Once again, this is Two Stout Guys. Ah! We're drinking stouts, my friend. You didn't bring me one? Well, I got up, I went right over to your fridge and, and got this for me. Oh, for you? Yeah. Well, we're trying it, right? All right. Well, uh, but, you know. tech guy's bringing mine over right now. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. What did you bring here? It's an so, accident. So I found this today. Turns out, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. We were trying to find an apple stout. Say it's a very niche thing. They do say that they exist. I guess there was one that came out early September within mm-hmm. our area in southeastern England. Okay. It's just... They're so hard to find. Um, there are a couple... Of, obviously, there's a lot of apple bourbon ales, but not so much apple stout. It's hard to find a fruit stout in general. Long story short, we didn't go that route. We went peanut butter chocolate stout because... You know, why not follow up dessert with more dessert? So we ended up getting the Snacksident because we mm-hmm. found it on Snacksident. <laughs> 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 All right, it's a peanut butter chocolate stout with a natural peanut butter flavors. Um, so it's by Smut Labs, which I was just actually Googling real quick and it's showing it out of um, Dover, New Hampshire, which is actually a place we go to a lot. True. Shout out to Furies. <laughs> <laughs> And a uh, place where Aaron's Guild plays a lot for uh, St. Patrick's Day. So if you're ever in that area, go check them out, definitely. Yeah, the old Smut Labs. Yeah, the old Smut Labs. So they do say that sometimes you just don't mean to take things that far. And I don't a, know what we're getting into. I don't know either. Oh, wait. <laughs> Ooh, nice crack, nice yeah, crack. Nice crack, nice crack. Just decent crack. All right, all right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, it's rich. Ooh, yeah. It's party. Oh, that is peanut butter. That smells just like an adult Reese's. You know what? That is amazing. It tastes like... I'm gonna... You know, it tastes like a mm. vanilla wafer. Yeah. How's that wafery flavor to it but you get the peanut butter you do chocolate on the back end 
but then it just dissipates into a, uh, an okay stout. It, it it doesn't have a very full body, but a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor right up front. Then you get that thinner stout, and then it finishes off with chocolate. That's yeah, how, that's how I'm getting it. Definitely finishes with the chocolate. But then again, the peanut butter wafer. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. the wafer cookie. Mm. A peanut butter wafer cookie, yeah, yeah. more so than vanilla. It just, Which is it, really interesting, because I've had other peanut butter and chocolate stouts, and it's just like peanut butter and chocolate, but that, that wafer thing just gives it a little something extra. Yeah, it's like a... a... It's something. It's good. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like it. I'm not going to... I'm not gonna knock uh, it. We've we've had some interesting beers on this, even just this show. Mm-hmm. This is one of the most interesting. So not, far, yeah, yeah. Not like not totally as advertised. Maybe even selling itself short. Because I, I wasn't too excited to try it. I'm like, oh, it's just a peanut butter chocolate stout, but that wafery. Once you said it, it sells it. It sells it right then and there. So yeah, pretty good find. Definitely a good find. Sometimes you just stumble into the right things. <laughs> and you that drink's real nice. Oh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you in a couple weeks. This is it. Nice bourbon bourbon, (laughs) barrel aged cider. There we go. Tongue twister right there. Yeah.